this is cool. We're creating a dynamic search bar within our Google Sheet right here. We can type in anything we want right here, and it's going to actually search through our transactions column from our data over here and pull out each transaction that matches or that contains, rather, the letters that we're putting in here. So if it's just a couple letters, it's going to find every match for that. I'm going to use two different ways to do this. We're going to use query and we're going to use filter. Hey, I'm Eamon. I do tutorials like this all the time here on YouTube. Please hit like and subscribe. I would love to have you as a viewer and a follower. Thank you so much for your time. Here we go. We've got transactions. These are actual transactions from January and February of 2023 from my personal account. Unfortunately, these are falsified amounts. I would like to have 500 grand, but I don't. Uh, also, all the values here, I've just uh, gotten random numbers less than 1,000, so they're completely made up numbers. But I wanted a couple hundred rows of uh, random transactions to search through. We've also got categories, drop down list of just some categories that we use at the house here, and some payment methods, same thing, drop down list. Here's the setup for those things. And then we got a running balance that's uh, simply based upon whether or not the category is an income or expense category. Okay, straightforward, adding and subtracting numbers. This is the fun part though. It's not a big deal to control F, find stuff, but if you want to just type something in like I do and have it populate the whole line, this is an easier, cleaner way to look at stuff. Okay, how do we do it? Query first. It is quite simple. On both query and the filter, I want to start out with an if statement, and we're just going to test if the search bar is blank, then I'm going to return an empty string. Because look, I don't want there to be an error when there's nothing in there. I want it to just be blank. After that, we've got our query, and we're querying the transactions, which is the full list of transactions from over here. In filter, we're doing the same thing. We're filtering the transactions right after our if is blank statement. So all that's the same, no matter which version of this you want to do. In query, though, we have a query statement in between quotes, okay? So we select columns to return. In this case, I'm selecting A, B, C, D, E. I don't care about the balance for the sake of this tutorial, so I'm just selecting those. If I did want the balance, I could just put an asterisk here, and then that would return all of the columns. But I don't, so I'm going to keep it A, B, C, D, E. And then here's the condition, where lower B contains J2. So lower B is just taking column B, which is the transactions column that I'm searching, and it's making everything lowercase. Uh, contains is case sensitive, so if I didn't have that and I had a um, lowercase search amount or search value, but it was uppercased over here, then it would give me an error. Similarly, if I put uppercase values in the search bar while using lower, it's going to give me an error. So just be aware of that whichever way that you go. Then I'm going to do the contains, and in order for it to reference to look up here at J2, the cell, instead of that just being a string in my query, we've got to do single quotes, double quotes, ampersand, and then type J2. And when you do this, it'll turn a different uh, color. The query statement's going to be in green here, and then this will turn uh, orange is in the case of right here. And then we do another ampersand, double quotes, single quotes, and we have our ending double quotes. Okay, that lets us query these transactions. And let's see something else. There we go. It just uh, dynamically pops up real quickly. Okay, filter. Same start. We're filtering the transactions, that big list. And then in this case, we're searching for J2. So search, if we use that on its own, it's really meant to find the first place where a value is found in a string. We're kind of gaming the system here because it works inside of a filter by searching for this J2 search bar amount within B3 through B25. And that's this column B where I'm just explicitly typing in the range. So it's going to say, hey, yes, this needs to be a true or false value. And in our case, it's true. And then it's going to filter everything in transactions by that value. If it were false, then, you know, it would give us an error. One more thing I want to look at here 
What if I wanted to see all of my home categories? So this is not all the home categories because it's just returning these three transactions that have the word home in it. Well, we just add conditions, okay? So right now I've got where lower B contains J2. I'm just gonna copy this part and I'm gonna say or where lower D contains J2. Now it's gonna look both at the B column and return any transactions with home in it, as well as the D column, which returns the categories. So then I could type in auto and it'd return all my auto transactions. So to do the same thing in filter, after a bunch of trial and error, there's not as good of a solution to combine conditions when using find or search. I did manage to do it by just using these equal signs. So I'm searching through the transaction range and I'm searching through the category range for J2. The problem with this um, is that it's got to match it exactly. So it's not going to return me any partial answers. That's just going to, if I put HO in there, it's not going to do anything. It's got to be HOME. Uh, the only advantage of a query is that it's not case sensitive. So either one will work just fine. Uh, however, in my opinion, query is the clear winner for this dynamic search bar. Hope this has been useful for you. Please don't forget, hit like and subscribe. Would love to have you watch some more of my videos, creating content like this on the regular. You're awesome. Thanks. Bye.